<laughs> this, this exhibit is sort of a physical manifestation and representation of the grassroots movement that we've been building here over the past several years. And movements for social change really cannot exist without the artists and the, the, the art and the artists that breathe life into the movement and create representations of our values and our vision and move the movement forward. So, so today we are celebrating all of the activists that are working together to make this um, incredible change in our state and in our country and in our planet and all of the artists whose creativity and passion is making this movement move. This movement has never been about just one pipeline, although we, are, we have primarily come together to resist the Mariner East that has come through our communities. The gift of this Mariner East pipeline, 350 miles across our entire Commonwealth, is that it's connected all of our communities, from the fracking fields in the western part of the state, in the Marcellus Shale region, to the refineries and the communities that live in Marcus Huck and Philadelphia, and all of us in between. We are building really the biggest grassroots movement that the state has ever seen. But the story of illegal taking of people's land and environmental degradation is not a new story. It is a thousands years old story. <coughs> it's a story that our indigenous brothers and sisters know all too well. And today I believe that old story is dying. And we are standing at the precipice of a new story. We are literally in a fight for our lives and for our children's future on this planet. And we look around and ask ourselves, who are the leaders? Who will show us the way? Who are the visionaries? And how are the new stories told? One of the most beautiful aspects of this movement that we are building is that there is no singular leader. Every individual that has come forth to contribute their talents and their gifts and their creativity and their art and their music and their photography and their videography and their writing and their painting, all of these people are the leaders of this movement. So without further ado, I want to introduce you to one of the incredible leaders of this movement, Carrie Barcombe. <laughs> Thank you everyone for coming here today. Um, so somebody asked me yesterday how the show came about and um, I just wanted to explain and 2016, I learned of the local Mariner East Tube Pipeline Project through EVE, and um, I debated whether to join the cause. And somebody told me, um, when you can't stop a pipeline, but if you get enough people, you just might. So a year later, trying to find a way to help, the idea of the show began. I became inspired by voices of other concerned residents. I saw the need to share information. The more I learned and experienced, the more I wanted to organize something that would bring us together. I also saw the need to validate and document this growing environmental movement. I want to give special thanks to the Media Arts Council for providing me with the opportunity to, to exhibit the, this um, community-based art show that so many were eager to contribute to and help with, and that indicates how important this movement is. I'm grateful to the many volunteers helping make this exhibit possible. For the patience of my family, for Chris Dietrich <laughs> and um, his tireless dedication, sure. helping make every aspect of this exhibit. Um, and to the Media Arts Council Exhibit Committee, including Rebecca Warda and Robin Weaver, and um, Eve uh, with the Clean Air Council, Nancy Harkins, Sam Rubin of uh, Food and Water Watch, Ash Ashley Haggerty, and for Annette Murray's design work, and for the help of PK Diddy, Paige McHugh, Sadie's Guardia, <laughs> and to all the amazing residents and artists whose strength and voices have risen above, creating action for positive change. These meaningful pieces were born of necessity and stemmed from the heart. To me, this is true art. And now in, the, in recognition of the important significance of this land's first people, and first environmentalists, it's my great honor to introduce Simon, son of Ruth Ann Jane Purchase James, descendant of the Lenape <coughs> clan through New Jersey, and founder of Friends of Lenape Everywhere. And he will be leading us in a traditional water ceremony to honor our land and water. And I wanted to present you the tobacco leaf. So thank you very much. I want to start 
by saying welcome to Lenape Hoking, the ancestral and current homeland of Lenape people. And I need to be clear that I am not a member of an indigenous tribe. I did speak with Chief Coker of the Lenape Indian Tribe of Delaware, who could not be here today, and he gave me permission to share this water blessing with you all. Tobacco is a wonderful gift, so thank you, Carrie. It is a sacred ancestor, a sacred family member in the Lenape tradition. It is not meant to be smoked. It is meant as a gift to be shared and to be given back to earth is used as a sacred part of ritual and never inhaled. And water is, as we know, life. Mpi Ankuntuaka. In the Unami dialect of Lenape, water's name is Mpi. Mpi. M-P-I in English. And it's not the water, it is water. It is a living part of us and we are a living part of water, mpi. So when we say mpi ankuntuakan, when we say bless water, thank you water, we are acknowledging our relationship to water as a living one and acknowledging its life. It is the lifeblood of the earth. I wanna say thank you to Carrie and Eve one more time. Thank you for participating. And I encourage you um, personally or as an organization doing this work to reach out um, to create relationship with local indigenous partners. We have three indigenous tribes along the Delaware River. Lenape, Lenny Lenape Indian Tribe of Delaware in Delaware, just outside of Dover. The Nanakoke Lenape Tribe on the Jersey side of the Delaware Bay in southern Jersey. And the Ramapo Lenape Tribe in northern Jersey who are fighting the Pilgrim Pipeline as we speak. And are fighting for their uh, sacred indigenous right to be in relationship with Earth and with all their relations. Um, so I encourage you all to, to do some, some deep contemplating about how you can work toward right relationship with the indigenous people of this land who have never left. Contacting Ruth Ann Purchase James at Friends of Lenape Everywhere is a, one way to start that kind of relationship. Um, Thank you again to Carrie and Eve for creating this space and creating uh, a place to, to delve more deeply into this work. Thank you. Thank you.